Everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Music Biz Weekly Podcast brought to you by the fine folks over at HypeBot.com. Thank you, Bruce, and everybody at HypeBot for everything you do to support the podcast. Check out HypeBot and check out, I mean, we've said this so many times, but check out HypeBot's new owners, Bands in Town. Yeah. Love that. Absolutely. Love Bands in Town. Um, So we were off last week. You were traveling and I was uh, in a client call, but here we are. We're ready. We're back. We're back. Let's drop some music marketing crap on some people here. Yeah. Well, you know, you and I were talking a little earlier about some of the things that just happened to you know, ruffle our feathers. And I, I think one one of the things we were talking about, which is kind of an easy fix, is, you know, kind of avoiding the set it and forget it mentality, whether it's your website, your email lists, your socials. And one of the things we were talking about is YouTube. And, you know, it's if you talk to the folks at YouTube, there's they'll tell you that there's so much more you can do with YouTube than have it be a repository for your videos. And they're right. I mean, there's there's a lot of great ways to market your videos there. There's great ways to engage your your uh, fans. Um, but a recent initiative that I've been working on, I started kind of looking at uh, some videos that had been up for a while, and I noticed that there was a lot of things that were either wrong or just bad. You know, for example. You know, when you're looking for videos on YouTube, or if let's say you're watching a video and you look at kind of that right rail, which a lot of uh, you know secondary views come from, um, you look at some of the thumbnails, and some of them are amazing. Some really make you want to click on that video, right? But some of them might have somebody who's blinking or in the middle of a sneeze or something because someone hasn't. And it's so simple to change that thumbnail to make it compelling. But if you think about it, that's like an album cover or a single cover or, you know, the box that your DVD came in, you know, if you still buy those. And, and, and you know, by default, YouTube gives you three thumbnails to choose from. Usually right. something at the beginning, something at the end, or something right in the middle. Um, and it's really easy to, to do that, right? I mean, you can either just click on it. You can click on it and change it to a different one. So, yeah, the person isn't like, oh. But if, if, <laughs> right. you, if you're, and I can't remember what the criteria is. Either it's a number of uploads or number of subscribers. or there, At some point, you pass a threshold and you can upload a custom thumbnail. Because the custom thumbnails are not available to everybody as soon as you launch a brand new account. You, you Interesting. Have, yeah. I wonder if it's the 10,000 because the the two that I've been working on are both over that. The, the first threshold is 10,000. And once you hit that, a lot of doors open up. You can use YouTube creator spaces. You know, 10,000 followers or 10,000 plays? Subscribers. Subscribers, right. Yeah. Right. And then the next threshold is a hundred thousand. And and again, then you get larger rooms and you get there's more I, I doors know that it's open not up. Subscribers because my account has I think eight thousand subscribers and I've got the feature. Yeah, so, and, and so that's there, what I was there, gonna there's, say. There's, there's, there, there's another threshold and, and You think that's so, per video on like the video level? No, I'm pretty sure it's on the account level. The channel? Yeah, the channel has to reach a certain threshold in order to get some of these additional features rolled out. One of one what? of those features and, and, and let's just be honest, one of those features is a custom URL. You have to mm-hmm. hit, hit a certain threshold, and I think it's mm-hmm. subscribers, and it might, and it's not 10,000. It might be like 100 subscribers, and then you can create a custom URL for your channel. Um, but a custom thumbnail is the same thing. So what, what you need to, to and, and listen, it's very easy to see if you can do this because when you upload a video and you see right. those three thumbnails at the bottom, there's a fourth box that you can click on that says custom thumbnail. And right. you just click on that and you can upload any image you want. Now, you've got to format it for the, the, the right. size of a YouTube video. It's Google it. The specs are up yeah, there. It's, it's super very, simple. It's very easy to do. But yeah. I do that for... The vast majority of videos, because you're right, that is that's your album cover, that's your selling piece. You know, take a moment to put a compelling image in there, even if it's just your 
album cover and some you know other bit of copy that says you know release today on sale now or yeah. whatever because remember it makes a that, huge difference that's the still image yeah so if somebody just sees the still image they're at least getting a little marketing message from you even if they yeah. don't click the play button yeah and i'm glad you brought that up about um not being able to do it without having to be at a certain threshold because all of the ones that i've done i've been able to do i've never had it not be a choice if that makes sense so that's yeah. that's really good I, advice. I know i've i've had some clients where you know they never had a youtube channel so <laughs> i create one for them and you're starting from scratch and there's a lot of the fancy stuff i shouldn't say fancy stuff but stuff you take for granted that right off the bat you can't do and i think it's just a i i don't i don't know why youtube doesn't make it available to everybody maybe they just yeah. want to see if you're serious before they give you the feature but yeah well, i'm gonna look into that maybe we can add it to the back. show yeah. notes but i i'd like to kind of find out a little bit more about the the custom url and the thumbnail i'll, I'll ask my my friends over at youtube and see if i can get a, a ruling on that so we've got the cover and that's a simple way of attracting people to click on it. But how many times have you seen the description, not the description, I'm sorry, the title of the video, it might say, you know, artist version 10 MP4, whatever is actually the, you know, the title of the video. You can actually, you know, change that title of that video, make it something more compelling. And so it's more descriptive and will help people click on it. And, and and help with search results. You know that that's one hundred percent. You know, put your artist name in the title of your video. Uh, yeah, it's it's you uploading it to your channel, and you sit here and go, "Well, everybody knows it's me." Yeah, but that's not how Google works. Google right. works based off yeah. of text. Search yeah. works off of text. Search doesn't know what's in the video. Yes, YouTube can look in the video for copyright infringement, but you're not getting search results based off of anything inside the video itself. Right. That's, it's that's all, really good. It all comes off of copy. So, yes, put your artist name in there. Put your album title in there. Put the single in there. Put the guest who appeared with it. If it's a named guest who's on that song with you, put their name in there as well. All of that stuff needs to go in there because it helps in... Google search. search results, and it helps immensely with YouTube recommendations. Yeah, one hundred percent. That and that's and a lot of what we're talking about here, other than kind of the image, but the the next few things that we talk about are really all about search. You know, when the title, yeah, that's super important. People sometimes forget about the description. Spending a little bit of time with that description and for search because it's going to search that description. So, you know, you want to have any guests that are involved and, you know, any relevant facts about where it was shot or, you know, all of those things need to be in that description. And also I always encourage people to put uh, links in that description, you know, like a smart URL makes the most sense, you know, where you have one URL that goes to all of your, your retailers, whether it's physical, digital, you know, streaming, all of that one URL that works kind of globally, you know, like a link fire or, you know, uh, bit.ly or radio or whatever it is. Um, those types of links are, are or really if, important. If nothing else, your website, just yeah. put your website URL in there. And, and, and here's a little tip I've learned a long time ago. So when you go watch a video in YouTube, you don't see most of the description. You basically right. only see the first line, and then there's a more box that will open right. it all up. Just because you don't see the copy doesn't mean Google it's and YouTube searched. are not searching it. They are searching all of it, even if it's not visible. But the, what's visible, what I learned is put your most important URL in that very first line. So the first line of your so it's description. above the fold. So it's it's literally the first sentence. It yeah. should be buy my new CD, click here, visit my website, click here, buy concert tickets, click here. That needs to be the first sentence. Then you can put all the other copy below it to fill it in and give you some good SEO copy. But yeah. because visually when somebody's watching that video, that's what they're going to see. And if nothing else, you want them to immediately see a link that they can click for something. 
And 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 what I would suggest for copy, and I do this a lot, especially if you've just released um, in typical fashion, you released the first single, the video to accompany it, and a press release went out for the whole thing. Put the whole press release in the copy description. I, it, it, there's great SEO copy right there that was written by a, you know, hopefully a professional publicist. Just copy and paste all of that yeah. right in there. Yeah, I don't know the exact limit of the copy for a YouTube description, but it's pretty big. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I've rarely have had to edit anything out. So, um, yeah, you know, take advantage of it. There's nothing worse than when I go and see artists' videos and their copy just says, you know, a website URL, and that's it. Yeah. There's nothing else yeah. there. It's like I... I need to know more. What was the album this came off of? When was it released? Are you doing, right. you know, put more information in there. Exactly. Um, yeah. But yeah. this also gets to your set it and forget it mentality of a lot of people upload all that copy and then never go back. And that's a problem because it might say, hey, Michael Branville's new album coming out November 23rd, might but say it's from two click, years ago. Click here to pre-order for an album exactly. that came out two years ago. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with putting a pre-order in your description. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that if you're going to do that, make sure you set a calendar reminder that on street date that you go back in and fix Jeez. that up so it's not dated and old and and a little thing i've done you know i don't know how effective it is but when you're always looking for <clears> little <throat> things to 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 help you get the word out if you've got videos that have been up for years and that are your most popular videos and they're getting millions of plays and they're still getting plays you could go back into that video that gets a lot of plays that's five years old and you could put the first line of the copy in there Check out my brand new album, blah, blah, blah. It's not related to that song or that video people are watching, but it is you, and it's your way to put a little blurb about a new release in front of people who are watching one of your most popular videos that, for whatever reason, keeps getting tens of thousands of views. That's great. Take advantage of those eyeballs and put a message in front of them. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing to kind of watch is there's a section in there when you're setting up your video where you can put um, what what YouTube calls tags, what we typically call keywords. And these are critical for SEO or search. So a lot of videos that I see on YouTube that people just ignore this field. They just don't put things in there at all. And I think that harms you when it comes to search. So it, it doesn't have to be a lot. I know some people put in like 20, 30 different ones and swear by it. I don't think you have to go crazy about it, but just make sure the right ones are there. You know, make sure you have those keywords yeah, that are going to actually lead people. Exactly. And the keywords should be somewhat targeted and specific, meaning don't make a keyword new album. That's, that's so broad. That's Or rock. Or rock <laughs> or music or lead guitar. Those are yeah. so broad that's not going to do much for you at all. Yeah. Um, what I like to do with clients is as, as I'm getting ready to set up things, I sort of create a master text file document that I use for YouTube. Here's the master copy description. Mm -hmm. which has got, you know, the press release or the about info and the URLs and all that stuff. And another list of um, keywords, just words or phrases separated by commas. And you can do a quick copy and paste when you're doing this. Yeah. The, the other tip is you can actually pre-populate your YouTube uploads with this data. You can go into YouTube and you can you can basically um, adjust a setting that says every time I upload a video, I want it automatically to be unlisted, which I encourage you to do. Never make uh, every video immediately public because you usually have to do some cleanup. And then you can say, here's what I want the title to be, here's what I want the description to be, and here's the keywords I want. So you could upload 50 videos and they'll all immediately get populated with all of the basic information. Yeah, and like that, a default The defaults, template. yeah. So now all you really need to do 
Let's maybe tweak the title so it's really specific to that specific video. <laughs> Yep. And maybe add one line or one or two keywords that are really specific, but stick with a default that you can use across everything. Yeah, yeah. And and I, I think that's super, super sound advice. I think with, you know, one of the things that I, I heard from YouTube was that the, the first 24 hours are crucial, you know, to getting views and affecting their algorithms. So what you can do, like you just mentioned it, you know, Put it as unlisted and make sure that you take a little bit of time to, you know, clean it up, but also to, you know, have a premiere or, you know, tease it out. So you're going to post it at a certain time. Don't just, you know, just post one on top of another and, you know, share it via socials and ECRM and make sure you respond to comments. A lot of folks kind of set it and forget it. And there are a lot of comments that, it also helps in search when they see a, a relationship going on, when they see a communication going on. Somebody may, and I'm not talking about trolls. I'm talking about someone who says, oh, man, that looks familiar. Where was that filmed? And then you respond to them. Or somebody says, oh, what record is this off of? Oh, well, it's in the title. It's this. And just having that communication can help you in search. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you, you know, it, and a lot of what we just discussed applies to Facebook videos as well. There's slight differences of what you can upload and pick and settings, but the same thing applies. You've got to think about the title. You've got to think about the description. You've got to think yeah. about keywords. You've got to think about the thumbnail, all of that type of stuff. Um, you know, and you've got to think about what's your strategy. Do you release the exact same music video on the same day on Facebook and YouTube, or do you use one to drive to somewhere else it depends on it it all depends there's no right or wrong answer let's put it that way um it all depends upon what your goal is if you want youtube views then use facebook to drive people to youtube yeah. but if you're more interested in facebook engagement then put all your effort into the facebook video um yeah. you know i've encountered people who would would put like a 30 second teaser on facebook and then tell people to go to YouTube to watch the whole yeah. video um, yeah. that you know there there's that that works I would say at some point in time though and and again you said like the first 24 hours are crucial I think we can right. all see that you know a week after you've posted your video the major plays are done unless unless you're getting some major love out there from press or sharing um, at that point in time, Definitely upload the full video to Facebook, though. Yeah, and get that. Yeah, whole Facebook. Video. Yeah, natively, right? Na I mean, because natively, not not you, not share you, not sharing yeah. the YouTube video. Upload the native MP4 file to Facebook. Yeah. Set it up because here's the thing that that what's really cool about Facebook pages is you upload that whole music video, and you got to set it as your featured video. A lot of people don't pay attention to the video page on their Facebook page. And you really do. You need to go in there because you can create playlists like you do on YouTube. You can set a featured video like you can on YouTube. Mm -hmm. But what happens when you set that featured video, that becomes a featured video that's always displayed in your Facebook wall. And, and, yeah. And if you've ordered the display sections, and we won't get into great detail, but you can change the order of meaning, oh, I want videos displayed first, then I want photos, then I want news, then I want toured Facebook events. You can move all those around. And I like to, especially around a new release, put the video section up top. Yeah. So no matter who lands on your Facebook page, the first thing they're going to see all the time, no matter how old that video is, it's that featured video yeah. right there for them to click and play. Yeah. You know, Facebook videos, uh, you're right. It's about what your goals are. Um, Facebook videos get 10 times the engagement when they're posted natively than if you post a link. And if you think about it, Facebook wants you to stay on their platform. Right. So it makes perfect sense. Um, so I'm, I'm a big fan of YouTube. I'm not a big fan of, uh, you know, the payouts for, uh, folks at this point, but as a platform, it's very powerful. 
Um, and I think that the other thing you have to keep in mind when you're posting things on, say, Facebook is that, and we've brought this up a couple of times, that, you know, almost 85% of videos on Facebook are watched with the sound off. And so people are going through their feed and they see a little video, and I'm guilty of this too sometimes. I'll watch part of a, a video. It's, it's rare that I actually stop and watch the whole thing. It's got to be compelling. And so make sure that you know when you're posting something to Facebook that you've got that part of the video, when it starts playing, it's got to be compelling. And it's got to, you know, you can see sometimes people will, will put in the description, you know, turn on sound, you know, or yeah. things like that, or maybe even an intro card. But just keep in mind that it's a different experience. When people go to YouTube, they're going there to watch videos. But when you're on Facebook, sometimes you might be laying in bed at night or, you know, you might be at work or waiting for somebody. The engagement of actually listening to that audio is quite low. Right, right. Now, you know, and, and for music, yeah, you don't get the impact of the music if you can't listen to it. But you can play that video with the audio off and you'll still get a play count. Yeah. So... At, that's something to keep in mind in that Facebook counts a video as a play if three seconds of it are viewed. Three seconds. Yeah. That's, you know. But you're not paid until 30, just like with the streaming services. Right. So, so, there's, so a, there's a slight disconnect there, there, there. There's a slight, there, you know, so a lot of people are like, oh, I got so many views on Facebook. It's like, yeah, but, you know, if you go in and look at your stats, it'll actually tell you how many three-second views you got, how many 10-second views you got, and I think it will also tell you how many watch it to the end. Um, yeah. It's dramatically yeah. different between all three of those levels. Yeah, I mean, I everybody's at that three-second level. But that can give you something to talk about. Oh, you know, our Facebook video just passed a half a million plays. Okay. That's something to talk about. Something to talk Point about. Point of uh, reference, sure. Un understand that somebody smart is going to say, yeah, but that's half a million three-second plays. And you don't need to get into the semantics and arguing. It's not fraud. People. It's marketing. It, it, yeah, you're, you're just con <laughs> communicating a, a success that you reached. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the, that that's also why it's important to get that full video eventually up on Facebook because yeah. – you know, you get a lot of people who track video plays. Well, you're going to add YouTube and you're going to add Facebook together to get total plays for that video. Right. So it it's in your benefit to get it up there on Facebook and get as many views as you can up there as yeah. well. Plus, yeah. listen, you can you can do a great boosted post of that video and drive a lot of views of that video just through spending 50 bucks. Yeah. Oh, massively. The other thing I wanted to kind of mention really quick is I notice sometimes when I go on, let's say, Spotify, and you can have your bio and you can have images and things uh, on there. Um, I notice that a lot of artists are like they said it maybe when they first got Spotify for artists and then they just forgot about it. And they've had releases since then, but their bio is about a release, one or two releases old before. Band, old band photo, old exactly. profile photo. Yeah. Members that may not be in the band anymore, you know the drill. So don't set it and forget it. You know, we were talking about this with YouTube. Go back, clean it up. Same with uh, Spotify for artists. And I know Apple Music for artists is still technically in beta, but if you are working with that, and frankly, there's a lot of for artists. There's YouTube for artists and Shazam for artists, and there's all sorts of these things. Whatever that platform is, you know, do a kind of a regular around a release cycle. Go through and make sure that it's updated with the correct updated bio. And images. and 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 listen, I understand that if you're doing this yourself, you may not have the time to go to every single one, and that's that's fair. Prioritize them. I, and and by that I mean, you got to make sure YouTube is good. You got to make sure Facebook's good. You got to make sure Twitter's good. You got to make sure Instagram is good. You got to make sure your Spotify page is good. I really right now, as much as Spotify is it, and everybody wants to be on playlists, the vast majority of artists seem to have no idea that they can do anything to control their page on Spotify. Yeah. Right. So you got to go in and get your Spotify for artists account. 
It's super simple. You don't have to jump through any hoops to do this. Um, and then you can get in there, and even if you ignore all the data, because God knows most artists will, you can at least go in there and upload a, a header photo, a profile photo, and a yeah. bio. Yeah. Just do those three things to get your, your Spotify account up to speed. Yeah. So, you know, again, prioritize what you can go through. Apple Music, same way. Apple Music for Artists is in beta. Um, it's a, you know, it, I think you and I talked about this a while ago, and maybe it's because it's in beta. There, it, it seemed a little more challenging to update um, an artist yeah. page in, in Apple Music because they have all these strange size requirements and you upload the oh right gosh. size and then it still says it's not accepted because yeah. because the, the, the main image has to be in the center third of the right. square and you're off a little bit. Yeah, you've got that template and if even when you follow it, there's other rules like I, I had one artist that I put on Spotify for Artists no problem. I tried to do it with Apple Music for artists, and it took eight tries. You couldn't have writing on the shirts. Yeah, you can't have you couldn't logos, have any icons have or names, emblems. Text. Spotify, you put the image up, boom, it's done, it's up, it's fine. Yeah, right. So, and and you're absolutely right. All you get back is kind of the form letter that says, "Here are the reasons we uh, reject images." It's one of these. You yeah. figure it out. Yeah, I exactly. So Apple Music needs to be there. But I understand it, you, it could be a bit of a challenge to manage yeah. and update through Apple Music. So at least at least do those others. At least get Spotify up to speed. Um, YouTube channel is not hard to, you know, may, like may, you had mentioned, you can change the video. You can, as you know, you can change the video for first-time visitors and, and then returning. people who've been there before. Right, returning. And it's super fun, super easy to do. I, I love going to a great YouTube channel for an artist where they have an, an intro video for maybe if you don't know their stuff that well yep. or you want to get a sense of who they are. And, you know, those things are very easy to do. There, there's, there's an about section in your YouTube channel where, again, you can upload the about copy for your, your band, your, your music. It can be anything you want copy-wise. You can add links to external websites and social networks in there. Um, so yeah, you've got to take advantage and make sure you update all of this information. But again, don't just set it and forget it because if you made it very specific to a certain release, you need At to some remember point, to make yeah. it specific to a new release. Don't right. forget to change your, your, your bio. If a band member chain leaves, you might think, oh, definitely we're changing it on our website, but you got to change your bios everywhere. You got to yeah. update that information, yeah. and and listen, we all get slammed, and it's easy to forget stuff. It's just I think you mentioned make a to do tickler item for a year from today to go back in and just look, and it's always good to do it at the end of the year, especially from Thanksgiving through mid January, especially when the the music business is quiet and things are slower, use that slow time to go through and set a bunch of reminders to check all of your accounts. Do I need yeah. to update this copy? What's the header look like? Just review all of that stuff and do a little tweaks here and there. Yeah, that's good advice. It makes a difference because that's a lot of traffic. People go to these platforms and you want them to see the latest information they can to drive them to the latest music and to, you know, for fan engagement. It makes a lot of sense. Yep. Yep. All right. So there you go. There's a little, don't, don't, don't just set it and forget it. Discussion don't set it you. and forget it. <laughs> <laughs> as, as nice as it is to do, it's going to come back and bite you eventually. Yes. You're going to go, who, who mm -hmm. left that image up on the profile page from five oh my years gosh. ago? You wouldn't be. You would be surprised if you saw some of the old, old images and bios uh, that we see online sometimes. And, and, it's and, and, and silly. it's not just new and independent no. artists that are doing this. People, trust me when no. I say, there's major artists who you're just scratching your head, going, "Why is that photo still there?" Yeah. Because yeah. somebody wasn't watching, somebody's not maintaining it, somebody's not yeah. thinking about it. It's not sexy, but it's important. Yeah, yep. Yeah. 
All right, so there you go. You got any questions, comments, leave it in the comment section here on YouTube or wherever you're watching or listening. And as always, we'd love it if you head over to uh, iTunes, subscribe, leave us a rating, a review. And yeah, subscribe on YouTube as well so you never miss a new episode. Appreciate so there it. You, there you go. Music Biz Weekly Podcast. We're out of here until next week. All right.